is Peter. I play guitar and I do backup vocals. I'm Abby. I play keyboards mostly and I sing. Um, Eric, can I play bass? Mm -hmm. And you guys are bass out of Asheville, of course. And how have you been working together as a band? Well, Peter and I are married, so there's that whole component to it. <laughs> <laughs> Iron sharpens iron, good friction makes good music, you know? <laughs> but uh, we've been doing it for about a year or so, um, and then, you know, EJ's been playing with us for a little bit less than that, but, you know. Yeah, I joined in April, I guess. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. And you guys are from different parts of the country. Yes, New sir. York City, San Francisco, and... So why did you move to Asheville? Well, you guys met in New York City, correct? That is correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm originally from New York, and um, at the time, this was back in like 2012, Abby and I met in Brooklyn and just really hit it off. Um, but I was, you know, in New York for quite some time, and it just felt like that uh, time to kind of move on and, you know, go, venture down south. And I wanted, you know, a little more nature in my life, but also an area that there's like a lot of arts and music and funky stuff going on. So I ended up in Asheville, you know. Yeah, most people in Asheville know that most of the people there now aren't from Asheville, yeah. so mm -hmm. um, I guess we're part of that group now. Um, but Peter and I, um, we were both teachers for some time. I was okay. a teacher for about 10 years, and the cost of living extraordinarily high in California, as you know, mm -hmm. and New York as well. So although Asheville's gotten more expensive since we've been there, it's still <laughs> quite less. Um, compared to where we're from, and it's just a beautiful place to be. Yeah, I love the mountains down there. It's so. lovely. You've always been in Asheville? Uh, I actually moved from uh, Jersey. Like, Jersey, okay. About three years ago or so. So, similar similar thing, just ch change of scenery. People are friendlier, it's Peter more affordable. And I came so. up with a long, long list of all kinds of band names, um, but really it stems from the two of us being together and He's the morning person and I am a night owl, so it just seemed like a fitting title for the band. And I guess the music is a bit dreamy, so we thought it fit that aesthetic well. Okay. And what's your genre of music that you perform? We, uh, we have a mix of sounds, but I would say it's pretty much indie rock. Shoegaze dream pop would be a good way to describe it. And who are your influences in music? I guess we can go down the line. Oh, we so all many. have lots of different influences. Why yeah, don't yeah. you start and we'll just go down? Oh, I'm a, yeah, it's all over the place. Um, a lot of great uh, psychedelic bands coming out of Australia. So, uh, playlist records like King Gizzard and Pond and Babe Rainbow. Really into a lot of that stuff that's going on over there right now. So. And I love a lot of indie pop bands. I'm a huge fan of the Cardigans growing up and the Sundays. Um, I also really love Stereo Lab and Broadcast and just a lot of newer indie pop bands that usually have female vocalists. Um, there's a band from New Zealand I like called Yumi Zuma. Um, Say Sumi is another band I like. So there's just lots of influences. I, I would, yeah, there's so many, um, like for shoegaze bands, definitely love listening to Slow Dive and My Bloody Valentine. I listened to a lot of 90s music as a kid. I loved Nirvana and Smashing Pumpkins, Screaming Trees. Great bands. Oh, yes, they're so, they're still awesome. Even today, I still listen to a lot of their albums. And uh, yeah, a lot of the newer um, stuff that's got loungier, jazzier stuff like King Cool. I really was blown away by Munya. It's like a 80s kind of like dream pop, you know, artist. Um, yeah, Zoom, yeah, Zoom, Zoom, uh, they mentioned. There's, there's a lot of stuff, you know. Who writes most of the music? Yeah, that. So Peter and I are the main songwriters. Okay. Um, we both write constantly and at different times in different places of the house. Um, but we have tried to be pretty democratic, and it's a pretty even mix. I'd say 50% of the songs that we perform are written by each of us. Um, and I usually finish all the lyrics pretty much, like 95% of the lyrics and melodies mm -hmm. for singing. But in terms of the, the music, um, the songs itself, it's definitely the two of us kind of hammering it out. 
and we've been so lucky with you know EJ he's so good with his bass lines and just like adds his own parts to the songs um, and that's you know what we've been looking for yeah we usually write these songs as, as like demos in garage band and then uh, when we feel like they're ready we'll have like EJ you know put a bass line to it and and uh, sometimes we'll have like you know a live drummer to you know write drum parts as well you know? so how come you don't have the drummer well you know it's interesting because we we play a lot and um, sometimes people's availabilities isn't always oh, okay. there so we have like a iPod or drum machine you know to add for tonight and um, well, it's okay yeah and some and sometimes we do shows where it's just me and Abby you know yeah. it just depends on everyone's availability yeah we kind of have a mix of both a two piece this is our three piece tonight <laughs> we've had a four piece. piece with a full drum so yeah. we've just tried to be as adaptable as we can to yeah. the venues um, we play with lots of musicians.